The rich-poor divide, unveiling the true factors behind societal economic disparities. In today's world, the richest 1% of people have nearly half of all the money, and the 80 wealthiest individuals have as much wealth as about half the entire world population, which is about 3.5 billion people. This clearly shows a big gap between the rich and the poor. Many assume that these wealthy people were either born into riches or got lucky with things like winning the lottery. However, that's not entirely true. Out of the 80 richest individuals, only 11 inherited their fortunes. The other 69 worked hard and were determined to build their wealth, including Warren Buffett, the famous investor. Warren Buffett, like most of these rich individuals, came from a middle-class background. But he found a way to gain the knowledge and skills needed to eventually accumulate the wealth of over $70 billion. We've all noticed the contrast between people living in luxury and those barely making ends meet. But have you ever thought about what sets the rich and poor apart beyond just their bank accounts? It's not just about money. There are underlying reasons. Consider this, a rich person and a poor person can live in the same city, have access to the same job opportunities, and both have the same 24 hours in a day. Yet, one might be struggling financially while the other has more money than they could ever spend. So, what truly separates someone who accumulates billions from someone who faces perpetual financial difficulties? To explain the difference, let's take our rich friend John and our poor friend Tim as examples. I'll outline the habits and qualities that set them apart which you can adopt to achieve financial success in your own life. Before we dive into their differences, it's important to note that both John and Tim have similar IQs, come from middle-class backgrounds, and live in the same city. In other words, neither of them has any inherent advantage over the other. However, their financial situations couldn't be more different. Let's fast forward to a typical Monday afternoon. Both John and Tim are on their way home from work. When Tim arrives home, he heads straight to his couch, turns on Netflix, and spends hours watching mindless TV to unwind from his long workday. Tim's boss had suggested that he would read more books to improve his chances of getting a promotion this year. Still, Tim isn't interested in reading, especially now that a new season of his favorite show has been released. When John gets home, he doesn't waste any time. He immediately sits down at his computer and starts studying. He spends hours going over his notes in preparation for an upcoming exam. Despite already holding a master's degree and several professional designations, John dedicates a few hours each night to pursue another accreditation that will help him advance in his career faster. In fact, John recently discovered that one of his role models, Dan Locke, invests over $500,000 every year in continuous learning. This realization made John think that if millionaires like Dan Locke are willing to invest so much time and money to learning new things, then he should definitely do the same. So, here's the first key difference between the rich and the poor. The rich never stop learning. They are constantly seeking to improve themselves and acquire new knowledge and skills. Now, let's look at how John and Tim's experiences at work highlight another difference. Tim receives a $100 bonus, much less than his colleagues. He complains to his boss, citing his 10 years of tenure and expressing embarrassment at the meager bonus. His boss, however, points out that Tim never stays late to assist his team and his productivity has been declining over the years. In contrast, John is diligently working on his current project when his boss approaches him with an envelope. Inside, he finds a $10,000 check made out to him. John is pleasantly surprised and grateful for the generous bonus. His boss explains that John has been putting in extra hours, and his recent project saved the company a million dollars in operating expenses. This bonus is a token of appreciation for his hard work. So, the second difference is that the rich focus on building wealth through assets while the poor primarily exchange their time for money. Next week, Tim eagerly awaits Thursday, which is his payday. As soon as he receives his paycheck from his boss every two weeks, he rushes to the bank to pay his bills. He sends money to his landlord, pays his electricity bill, and sets aside money for income taxes. At the end of the month, Tim checks his bank balance and is surprised to find that not only did he not save any money, but his account balance is even lower than it was a month ago. He can't figure out where all his money went. On the other hand, when John receives his payment, $500 is automatically deducted and put into a savings account that he can't touch. After ensuring that his savings are taken care of for the month, John pays his mortgage, utilities, and income taxes. When the month ends, John is happy to see that his bank balance has grown, making him even wealthier than before. So, the third difference is that the rich prioritize paying themselves first, while the poor tend to pay themselves last. One evening, after finishing work, Tim watches a TV ad for a new high-definition television priced at $1,000, which is his entertainment budget for the year. While Tim considers buying it, he also wants to get a new PlayStation, which costs $500. Unfortunately, he can't afford both and wishes his boss had given him a bigger bonus to afford both items. Tim feels disappointed. On the other hand, after successfully passing his exam, John wants to reward himself for his hard work. 
He also has a thousand dollar budget but desires both the state of the art TV and PlayStation console. Instead of choosing between them, John thinks about how he can get both. He decides to take on a side consulting project to earn the extra $500 needed to cover the cost of the PlayStation. This way, he can create the perfect gaming setup to celebrate his significant achievement. So, the fourth difference is that the rich tend to have a growth mindset while the poor often have a fixed mindset. Tim dislikes going to work so he makes buying a $5 frappuccino from Starbucks a regular part of his morning routine. He believes that without his sugary latte, he wouldn't be able to endure a few hours at work. He's willing to spend $5 each day on this caffeine boost and it brings him happiness. In contrast, John walks past Starbucks every day and opts for the free coffee available at work instead of buying an expensive latte. Although the office coffee isn't as delicious as Starbucks, John sees the value in saving $5 every day. Over the course of a year, he accumulates $1,500 which he plans to use for an all-inclusive trip to Mexico with his friends. John understands that delaying immediate gratification aligns with the traits of his wealthy peers as he learned from a Temple University study. This study found that the ability to envision larger future rewards is a significant factor in achieving affluence. It's why he easily turns down the daily latte when he envisions the fun he'll have on the beach in Mexico with his friends. So, the fifth difference is that the rich understand the importance of delaying gratification while the poor often seek short-term pleasures. When the economy takes a downturn, many companies resort to laying off employees to reduce costs. One afternoon, while Tim is at his desk not putting in much effort and scrolling through Facebook, he receives a message from his boss instructing him to turn in his laptop and badge because he's being let go. Tim panics, worrying about how he'll cover his rent and bills now that he's lost his only source of income. He used to believe that being an employee meant having job security, but getting fired makes him question the validity of that belief. Unfortunately, John also loses his job but his exit is different. During the exit interview, John's boss praises him for his excellent work and explains that he had let go of all other employees before John. John accepts his fate gracefully, thanks his boss for the opportunity, and assures him that he'll be financially okay. The reason John remains confident is that he understands that no job is completely secure. That's why, as soon as he started working, he began building an online business and investing in a dividend stock portfolio. These investments are now established enough to provide him with financial stability while he searches for another job. So the sixth difference is that the rich tend to create multiple streams of income while the poor often rely on just one. About a week after losing his job, Tim is at home with his friends lamenting how tough the economy is and how finding another job seems nearly impossible. They complain about life's unfairness and how they'd be wealthy if they had the same lucky breaks as others. On the other hand, John takes a different approach. The evening after losing his job, he hosts his close friends for dinner. While they eat, John explains that he was let go due to the challenging economic times but assures his friends that his other sources of income will comfortably support his current lifestyle. One friend eagerly offers John an executive position at his construction company, seeing an opportunity for John to join their team. Another friend suggests they start a consulting company together, recognizing their past successful collaboration and the potential for their firm to become one of the leading businesses in the city. So, in conclusion, the seventh difference lies in the fact that wealthy individuals associate with other prosperous people, while those with fewer financial resources tend to be around individuals facing financial challenges. To recap, the distinctions between the rich and the poor encompass a commitment to continuous learning, prioritizing value over time, putting themselves first financially, cultivating a growth mindset over a fixed one, utilizing the benefits of delayed gratification, establishing multiple income sources, and surrounding themselves with affluent peers. Thank you all for watching. Please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Stash Cash signing off.